Well, greetings all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, what a delight it is to be joining you this morning for this short reflection on God's Word as we continue our journey uh, towards Calvary and the cross that held our uh, precious Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As you can see, I'm back in my office, and uh, so we're hoping and praying that the uh, pandemic will move in a positive direction and uh, we'll be able to um, be a little more like normal in the days and weeks ahead. Certainly the sun is shining brightly and it's feeling uh, a lot more like spring and so we just rejoice in the Lord for this day that he has given us. So this morning we're continuing on our journey through Isaiah chapter 52 and 53, what scripture tells us about the suffering servant, that is Jesus Christ. And this morning we're in verse 9, reading from the New Living Translation. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for the beauty of your creation all around us. We thank you, Lord, that we have this opportunity to pause and to come into your holy presence, Lord, to uh, see your face clearly, uh, to discern your will for us, and to hear you speak your truth through your holy scriptures. And so, O oh God, we pray that you would quiet within us any voice but your own in the name of Jesus Christ. That as we reflect on these passages of scripture, Lord, that you will speak a word of encouragement and a word of hope. For us as we continue our journey with you. Father, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So reading from verse 9 of Isaiah chapter 53. He had done no wrong and had never deceived anyone, but he was buried like a criminal. He was put in a rich man's grave. I think one of the important and troubling uh, verses in this, um, this section for me is that is this verse that says he had done no wrong and had never deceived anyone. Jesus was put to death on the cross at Calvary, even though he had done no wrong. And he had never deceived anyone. He had, throughout his life and ministry, spoken the truth. He had spoken the words that God the Father had given him to speak. He had done the things that God the Father had given him to do. He was obedient to his Father's will being done, even to the point of death death on a cross. He had done no wrong. His gospel is a gospel of love. His ministry was a ministry of love and grace and compassion and forgiveness and mercy and kindness. He, he did not return evil for evil, but he show, showed forth the love and grace of God the Father in everything he did. He truly was and is the only man, fully human yet fully divine, yet without sin. He had done no wrong. And his gospel is truth. There is no deception in Jesus. There is no deception in his word. There is no deception in his message. He never deceived anyone. But he spoke the truth. He did so in love with kindness, but he didn't candy coat the message. 
he spoke the truth. Which is why he was able to proclaim in, in John's Gospel, chapter 14 and verse 6, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. His message was consistent from the beginning to the end, which is why we read he had never deceived anyone. There is no deception in Jesus Christ. He was the living personification of the truth of God. And then we read, but he was buried like a criminal. This is an important verse because it proclaims the truth that Jesus died on the cross. He was dead and buried. Some have suggested that he didn't actually die. He just kind of went comatose and, and, and so... He was removed from the cross and he was kind of, he was in a coma and he wasn't actually dead. And so when he was restored, it came out of the coma, then he continued to, to do his ministry, refuting the claim that he died and was buried and rose again on the third day. And of course, we know this claim to be false because indeed Jesus was dead we have the the claims of the witnesses who saw the spear the Roman centurion's spear driven into his side and outpoured blood and water indicating that he was dead. And he was removed by the from the cross by Nicodemus. And he was buried in a rich man's grave. This freshly hewn grave in which Jesus was buried was not the not the the, the grave or the burial place of a poor person, of a pauper. When, when poor people were taken down off the cross, they were, pardon the expression, but chucked in a mass burial site where the bodies would rot and decay and be uh, left to nature's course. No honor, no uh, remembering, no place to... Um, to show respect to the deceased. But Jesus was not like that. Jesus was taken down off the cross by those who loved him. And he was carefully wrapped in linen cloths and laid in this freshly hewn grave. No dead person had been placed in this grave. Which is kind of an important point to note because even in death, Jesus was not defiled by sin. He was placed in a pure, clean, unblemished grave. And on the third day, he rose victorious. So friends, we read the, this verse and we recognize this continuing message in Isaiah that Jesus did not deserve to die. But it was our sin. It was our rebellion against God that placed him on that cross at Calvary. But even in death, he was honored. 
He was respected. He was glorified. And God did that for you and for me. Jesus spared his life, laid his life down for you and for me in order that our lives could be taken up, born again into the new life that he prepared for us. And so we rejoice. Even in the midst of suffering, we rejoice because God has placed his hand of favor upon us. He has claimed us as his own through the shed blood of his son, Jesus Christ, and all who place their faith and trust in him. And so we take encouragement, friends, that even though Jesus suffered and died, it did not end there. As the great creeds of the faith say, he was dead and buried, and he descended into hell, and he defeated death once for all as he waged war against the grip of death and was victorious. Victorious because the grave could not hold him. Victorious because death and evil and Satan could not win against him. Victorious because on the third day, he burst forth from the grave in his resurrected body. The first fruit of the resurrection, as Paul puts it, never to die again. And he ushered in for us a new reality, this new and living hope that we have, that we live and we will die for certain. Every man is, and every person is to die once, but the born again believer doesn't rest in that finality. The born again believer rests in the hope of future glory, that we will die, yes, but we will be resurrected to new life, never to die again. And we have this hope because Jesus prepared that way for us. And so, even though he had done no wrong and did not deceive anyone, his death was not in vain. His death prepared and made the way for us who will one day all die to this life. But he prepared the way for us to live eternally, everlasting, from everlasting to everlasting in his glorious presence. And it's that hope, friends, that we cling to, that hope that keeps us going, pursuing our Heavenly Father, seeking to walk humbly with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on the path that Holy Spirit prepares for us each and every day. And so, friends, as you embark on your day today, do so with the joy in your hearts that Jesus has prepared the way for you, a way for this day and a way for everlasting life. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you that you loved us so much that you were willing to send your one and only Son to dwell among us, to seek out and to save the lost, and to draw them to yourself. We thank you, Jesus, that you were willing to suffer the shame of the cross for each one of us who are the ones who deserve to be there. But you took our place, bearing our sin upon yourself, suffering the pain of rejection and death, even though you had done no wrong and had not spoken a deceptive word. You took all of that upon yourself for our sake. 
so that we could commune with you for all eternity. And so, Lord, we give you praise and thanksgiving this day for the redemption won through your shed blood for all who believe, all who have placed their faith, their trust in you. And we thank you for sending Holy Spirit to dwell among us, to abide in us, and to lead us each and every day as we walk humbly with you. Father God, we pray that you will make your face shine before us. We, we pray that your hand of favor will be upon us, that you will go before us and behind us, upholding us in your love, giving us the words to speak, words of grace, words of hope, words of promise. We pray, Lord, that everything we say and do this day will be for your glory. I lift high the name of Jesus, in whose mighty and precious name we pray. Amen. Well, friends, thanks for joining me this morning for this short reflection on God's Word. I hope that you have been encouraged by it and find hope in it. And we look forward to seeing you tomorrow as we unpack the next verse in this journey through the prophet Isaiah. Friends, go in peace. The Lord bless you and keep you this day and always. Amen. See you tomorrow, friends.